What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now I know there's an influx of these types of videos on the internet but I really did try my best to make sure the photos on this list weren't repeats from any of our previous videos but obviously if they are, sorry not sorry, I really did try. And by now I think we have a great time discussing creepy scary things together, you know, you and I. So stick around you fools, these are the top 10 creepy photos that can't be explained. Starting us off with number 10 is the foot. I know you guys probably think starting off with a foot is super anticlimactic, but after hearing the story behind this, you'll 100% change your minds, I promise. Now, Mary Risa lived in St. Petersburg, Florida, and on July 2nd, 1951, a picture was taken of her that still has zero explanation attached to it till this day. Mary's landlady came to deliver a telegram and noticed the doorknob was oddly hot. She called the police, and when they got the door open, they found Mary's remains, aka a pile of ash, and all that was left was part of her left foot that strangely still had a slipper on and her backbone and skull. What didn't make sense was the fact that even objects near her had lost their shape but her foot was still in perfect condition. The room showed no evidence of a fire taking place in it so how on earth did the place she was sitting in catch fire and her body burn but nothing else was affected? No fire damage, not even smoke damage, apparently Mary just spontaneously combusted but her left foot didn't. I don't know. I don't know, I, whatever that left foot has, I need it too because I'm not trying to die anytime soon. Now coming in at number 9 is The Little Boy. Now I listen to a serial killer's podcast quite often because A, I like to know what's out there and B, I find it interesting so clearly I'm psycho. But anyway, one of the episodes was on The Candyman. Dean Cole, aka The Candyman, was a serial killer that kidnapped, tortured and raped and killed at least 28 boys in the early 70s in Houston. Dean had two teenage accomplices that helped him lure the boys in and who made the boys trust going with this grown ass man because two other teenagers were there too so made the whole thing less sus I guess. But thankfully Dean is dead now but in 2012, 40 years after his killing crusade, a photo was found in one of his accomplices possessions. The photo was of a little brunette boy handcuffed to some bar and that wasn't that weird since they tended to take pictures of all their victims but here's the catch, all 28 of his victims were identified and this boy wasn't any of the original. 28. So who the hell was he? And what became of him? I feel bad for his parents who will probably never get closure on where their son went. I feel like we should make this go viral just so they can see it and be like, okay, I think our son was killed. At number 8 we have The Healer. This one is just creepy and odd on so many levels. So back in 1975, Diane and Peter Berthelot, Berthelot? I don't know. They went to the Warstead Church in Norfolk. Now at the church, Diane sat down to pray and Peter captured a photograph of the moment. A few weeks later, when Peter got the pictures developed, he saw something very bizarre. On the bench behind Diane, there was this ghostly white figure looking to her left. It seemed to be bald with a Voldemort looking head and just all around creepy. When the couple went back to the church, the vicar told them he thought perhaps it was the ghost of a healer who haunted the church, but apparently the apparition had never been seen until now. So was it a ghost? Is he who shall not be named making his like fourth comeback? I need answers. Who is this white egg? Filling on number 7 slot is the finger. We as a species have been hearing about the possibility of giants existing for the longest time. There are legends, there are real reports and stories, but in this picture there was actually evidence. Back in 1985, a photographer called Gregor Spori went to Egypt and met a grave robber, as you do, and he was in possession of a mummified finger. And that in and of itself doesn't really raise any alarm bells, but you'll be happy to know the finger was 15 inches long and if you do the maths it could only have come from a man that was at least 12 feet tall. After the pictures were made public no one could explain them, no one could debunk them as fake until this day almost 40 years later it still remains a mystery. 12 feet that's actually more than double my height. More than double and then some. So we don't need people that tall in this world, no, 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 <laughs> they'll just step on me. Now at number 6 is the burning car and in all honesty I couldn't find any backstory for this photo whatsoever. It's a picture of 5 kids wearing Disney masks holding hands standing in front of a burning vehicle. Weird flex, but okay. Like did the kids set the car on fire? Who the hell took the photo? Was it Daphne Duck? Was it a weird adult who was holding these kids hostage for their own sadistic means? I mean I was thinking about this picture for a long time and I was literally like that meme of that woman who has all those equations around her and she's like 
That was the true me. Does anyone know the story behind this one? Please comment below if you do so I can die happy and so this doesn't plague me for the rest of my life. I just don't want that hanging over me. I'm sure you guys don't either. Coming in at number five is what's in the woods. So okay, so this picture okay, so this picture was taken back in August of 2013, and I don't really know anything about the picture other than a hunter had set up his camera in the woods and decided to leave it overnight to record. When he checked the footage the next day, he mostly saw woodland animals eating grass here and there or running past the camera. But at 4.03 a.m., the camera captured two things. A deer running past the camera and a little boy or ghost. This boy or his apparition are in the background of the photo, but he's very clearly there. And I don't think it takes much to question why the hell a little boy who probably is four or five at best in the woods alone at 4 a.m. Maybe this wooded area is near a neighborhood and this boy somehow left his house and got lost, but I feel like that's a long shot. Was he a ghost? Could be. But also, how? Why? What's his story? Answers, please. At number four is the South Tower Woman. So this one is a bit of a touchy subject as it's about 9-11, but the show must go on and it's actually two photos, not one. Now the photos are of the South Tower of the World Trade Center on the day of the attacks and in the corner of both, you can see a woman standing at the edge of the hall just waving. It turns out that woman is Edna Clinton who somehow managed to survive the plane crashing into the building. Almost everyone on the floors where the plane hit died but Edna miraculously survived somehow. And people have no idea how she survived and on top of that, she somehow even made it out of the building. Was it luck? Was it timing? Was it sheer fate? I don't really know. But everyone who has seen the image is perplexed by the same question. How? Filling at number three slot is the Falcon Lake incident. So personally, I'd never heard this story before doing this video. If you guys have, feel free to skip number three. So this incident took place on the 20th of May back in 1967, and the affected was a Mr. Stefan Michalak. Stefan? Stephen? Stefan? Not really sure. Stefan, I'm just gonna go with Stefan. So Stefan had decided to take a vacation and was walking through Whiteshell Provincial Park to look at the veins of quartz near Falcon Lake. As he was approaching the lake, he saw two cigar shaped objects descending from the sky right towards him. One of them landed near him, the door opened, and he heard voices from inside. He tried to communicate with whatever was inside, but no one responded. Then as the story goes, he was investigating the colorful glass that was surrounding the object for a grid-like exhaust exhaust vent expelled some gas and burnt him. The burns were on his stomach area and it was just a bunch of small circular burns arranged in a square. Now in the picture, Stefan looks like he's near death, which I'm pretty sure he wasn't, but the whole incident was classed as one of the most well documented UFO stories in Canada. But on the other hand, many skeptics refused to believe Stefan's story, claiming he was probably just drunk on his walk and something happened to him after that. Other people even think he put hot coins on his stomach to create the burns just to match his story. No one will truly know the truth except Stefan, and I'm pretty sure he's dead now because in the photo he was like 70, and that was like a long time ago. R.I.P. Stefan. Now at number two is Our Lady of Zaytun, also known as Our Lady of Light. Now this was a mass Marian apparition that was seen in Cairo for like two or three years back in 1968. Now the first time it was seen by a mechanic who worked opposite St. Mary's Coptic Church who thought a woman was committing suicide by jumping off the church. Two other people actually corroborated his story and so they called the police. A crowd started gathering around the church but police dismissed it as a weird reflection of light. The crowd refused to believe them and stayed watching the apparition and the same thing happened a week later and then more and more frequently. Police had no explanation for it, there was no projection device within a 15 mile radius and no photoshop or manipulation was involved in the photos. So we have no idea why this apparition kept appearing, if it really was an apparition or if some light projection prank was just executed really damn well, I don't know. So how can I tell you? And finally, at number one is the pyramid. And this picture is the worst quality you can possibly imagine, but it was taken in the early 70s, so I feel like we can just sweep the quality under the rug. <laughs> so the photo was actually taken by Apollo 17, which was NASA's Apollo program's last mission. They started off on the 7th of December, 1972, and as they were near the Geophone Rock, they took a picture that was later listed as blank in the Apollo 17 photographic index. Now the original image is so hazy, but even in it, you 
you can see a pyramid structure in the landscape. And when analysts adjusted the contrast levels, you can very clearly see a pyramid type thing on the moon. And if that's the case, why has this not been properly talked about since the 70s? I mean, it's been 50 years. Come on, people, there could be a pyramid on the moon, and we're just sitting here like clueless ninnies. But also, so many missions have been to the moon since then, so surely if this really was a huge discovery, many more people would have seen it too, or at least said something about it. I don't know. I'm curious and I'm confused. Like me the whole video through. And that's it for today's video guys, honestly if anything it annoys me that these photos are out here for us to see with no explanation, like humans are so curious, we need answers, I need to know, I can't be left on a cliffhanger 10 times and that's just the 10 in this list, like there were so many more and I was like how? Why? But how? Either way, let me know what you thought in the comments below and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll catch you in the next one, bye!